busy summer in the aquarium basement well also the aquarium annex to the aquarium basement whatever we call it we'll just call it the annex uh, a ton of work's been going on a ton of progress and we're nearing a major milestone on the 4500 gallon build uh, i'm going to show you all of that in this video we're going to check out the discus aquarium we're going to go deep into the wetland filter i'm going to actually show you the footage from building the wetland filter for the 315 never before seen but it's going to explain how that filter is going to work. You're going to see it in this video. We're going to be building a much larger version of it in the 4500 gallon, as well as we're going to talk about why I call it the Zingu River Aquarium. I'm going to show you how it actually is going to be a living river bank, or living river aquarium with a living river bank and with uh, aquascaping going on inside of it that is uh, both lessons learned from the 3000 gallon. You know, all the improvements are going to be baked into it. But also it's going to be something special. Let me put it this way. Building this aquarium, I consider the halfway point for the 4500 gallon. Once the 4500 gallon is built and holding water, I think I'll be halfway done. That's how much work is going to go into the aquascape for this aquarium, both underwater and above water. It's going to be crazy. So as always, let's go. Okay, we're going to start with the 4500 gallon. Well, you know what? Let me start with uh, this guy down here. Yes. I have finally purchased an electric caulk gun. <laughs> yes, and yes, I should have purchased it years ago, but before I do those four giant windows, yeah, it was definitely time. So where are we at with the build? Where, well, where we are is that we are 100% skinned. The uh, aquarium has been fully skinned with three quarter inch plywood. You can see the filter box all ready to go. The main aquarium skinned all the way down and you can see that so let me hop in the aquarium here we'll take a closer look so the entire aquarium has been skinned three quarter inch plywood all the way around this is the filter box and then we're gonna cascade out here into the aquarium and uh, we are skinned all the way down 33 feet and you can see I've started on the fill work as well so we're gonna fill all the seams and fill all the screw holes all the way around the aquarium and get it ready for the next stage. So the first stage obviously was framing it and the second stage is skinning it and filling it and the filling will be done shortly. That's actually a pretty easy part of it. And you're saying, what is the next stage after that? Well, that is fiberglassing. <laughs> That's why we have a ton of uh, fiberglass mat and fiberglass resin. Lots and lots and lots of it. So yes, uh, I was doing the calculations and I was essentially gonna be fiberglassing like 75% of the tank and I said, well, you know what? Why don't I just go ahead and glass the entire thing, 100%. So uh, we'll, <laughs> I will be fiberglassing 100% of the build. And uh, so that is the next step. So like I said, the filling will be done shortly. That's easy to do. Uh, when you build it tight, there's not a lot to fill, mostly just screw holes. So no big worries there. And uh, yes, I'll be fiberglassing next. And uh, we all know that uh, these guys here have saved my life, the true composites. I used to use the Bondo fiberglass and it was terrible. And the true composites has been so much better. So yes, what we're gonna do, we are gonna fiberglass every single seam of the aquarium. You know, all the vertical seams, all the horizontal seams. And then we're gonna fiberglass the entire bottom of the aquarium and all the walls. And of course, we'll be fiberglassing inside the wetland filter, up and over, you name it. We are gonna turn this thing essentially into a bathtub with windows. <laughs> but uh, yes, it will be 100% fiberglassed, and then we will get on to epoxy coating. That's the uh, the pond armor painting. So yeah, at that point, so we basically have fiberglassing, we have pond armor, and then I'll be installing the windows. So siliconing in the windows. So we are getting, so we are getting very close to this tank being ready to hold water. So it's been like an entire episode since I've shown the uh, 220 gallon flooded forest discus aquarium. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd show these guys real quick. 
They are beautiful. Uh, it is amazing how fast those little guys have grown. These were the little babies. <laughs> They're getting pretty big. Now, obviously, the uh, original discus are much bigger, but they are growing super fast. And I'm happy to say that everybody else in this tank is doing great. The schools of uh, Neon Tetra, Rummy Nose Tetra, Glow Light Tetra, and Serpe Tetra are all doing awesome. And uh, yeah, loving hanging out under the branches. Uh, we do have the one run to the litter for the new guys. Nobody bothers him, but he likes to hang out by himself a lot. And he's considerably smaller considering he was the same size as this guy when they first came in. You can see quite a difference. So everyone else is bigger like this and there's the one runt. Uh, but nobody bothers him and he eats and he seems healthy. So I, it's all good. You know, sometimes it just works out that way. And uh, <clears throat> happy to see that the, the uh, swords, they are... You know, they are growing very slowly. I've been sort of, uh, I, I, you know, I don't dose it as much as I should. I get caught up in things like building 4,500 gallons, but uh, uh, but they are coming along and uh, helping to improve the tank. Now, one thing I have done in this aquarium, obviously, was add the pothos up top, but uh, I've also kicked up the water flow some. I have that uh, vertically mounted power head in the back blowing on the back and, all on the, and then it wraps around and comes to the front. So it goes around the back there and then comes to the front. And uh, that seems to have uh, picked up the plant growth a little bit. So we're just sort of moving those nutrients around. You can see this guy over here, he's bending a little bit in the water and that flow is actually coming from all the way back there and around before it gets to him. So definitely improved. And it's just nice when uh, there's a tank that's beautiful and it's in cruise control. Everyone's happy, healthy, and I uh, just get to kick back and just enjoy it. So why, is it, so why is it that I say that this is only half of the build? Well, because there's a lot of stuff going on up above the aquarium. So once the aquarium's ready and holding water, then we have top bracing. Then we have the integrated riverbank system that I'm gonna be putting in here, uh, a live riverbank. So this is gonna be going down into the water and up out of the water and growing up. I'm gonna have an entire thing for the lighting, uh, a really nice system for the lights to be um, visually out of the way but shining back onto the aquarium and being able to handle lighting the water and lighting this live riverbank. And then of course we have a massive wetland filter to build. So we're gonna cover that in this video. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of video that I took for the 315 gallon build of building that wetland filter. And this is the same thing, but just on a larger scale with larger materials. So some of the materials will be different, but all the concepts will be the same. And then I'll also show you uh, some of the plans for the riverbank and how we're going to have live plants growing out of the top of the aquarium and down into the water all along the back. So now here's some footage from uh, when I was building the wetland filter for the 315 gallon. Remember, uh, techniques are going to be exactly the same for the 4500 gallon, but much larger, heavier material. So don't worry, no egg crate in the 4500 gallon, but it does work in the 315. So let's check out the wetland filter build for the 315. Okay, you can see that I have the, uh, the standoff section down there uh, creating that cavity underneath where we have the pump. The pump is going to be pushing water down this tube and it's going to get distributed throughout all these tubes underneath which have, they're uncapped and they have holes drilled in them everywhere. So the water is going to distribute everywhere. And then of course we have our clean out post and we have the top painted black because that'll be visible above the uh, substrate level here so that we can put a hose down there for sucking water out. And we left a little bit off here because we're gonna be putting a union valve and everything to connect to the pump. Uh, so you might be asking, uh, why did you use egg crate and PVC pipe and zip ties? Well, I'm reusing material that I already had. You can see that that, that egg crate's all kind of gunky looking and everything. And even the PVC pipe, you can tell it was used in something else before I cut it up. Uh, so yeah, I am just reusing materials. You could use, uh, they make small egg crates that would work in here. You could cut holes in those. Uh, there's a lot of different things you could use to create that, that cavity down there, that standoff for the water to flow underneath the substrate. But uh, yeah, it's just got to be strong enough to hold up the substrate and of course to allow the water through it. So now, let's take a look at the substrate that we're going to be building up in our wetlands filter. So once again, harvesting rocks from other projects uh, that have been waiting around for a new use and their new use is in the wetlands filter. So we're going to start off with the larger rocks, which are probably uh, 
five to six inch, four to six inch, uh, what they call river jacks. Just kind of rounded river rocks of various sizes, which is exactly what you want. And uh, we're going to build the first layer uh, with the river, with the four to six inch river jacks. And then, then we'll switch over to these smaller river jacks, probably uh, three quarter to one inch or so. And then lastly, we'll end up with gravel on the top, something of the consistency of uh, pea gravel. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting the first layer in, and then we'll take a look. Okay, so the first layer of uh, rock is in place. These are what I'm calling the, the larger stones, at least for, for this build. These are the, the largest uh, aggregate we're going to have in the filter at the bottom there. And uh, next, we're going to move on to the medium, which are... Uh, they're also river jacks, but they're just a smaller diameter, probably one, around three-quarter to one inch or so. And that's going to be the next layer, and then after that is going to be our gravel, something more the consistency of aquarium gravel or pea gravel. So that's it for the uh, middle level of gravel. So we got the larger on the bottom, the medium here in the middle, and then now we're getting ready to add the pea gravel for the top, so the final top. And this is where the uh, wetland plants will be planted into as well. So we want to get a, a few inches of this for sure just to hold that up. At least that's what my assistant tells me. Okay, so that's about uh, three inches of the pea gravel, and um, that's really as deep as we need it. So there's a few factors. If you go really, really tall with this aggregate that you have down here, it's uh, that much stronger of a pump you need to be able to pump the water down through and then back up through it. Uh, so we don't want to do overkill. I mean, there's more than that's needed for this aquarium already, but we don't want to go crazy. And because uh, we don't want to have to put uh, super expensive uh, high head pressure pumps on here. And the other thing is, it's going to be planted, so it's going to be a wetland. So we want to have the water level is obviously going to drain here. So we want to have about the depth that we want for the plant baskets uh, with the plants in them to sit in here and be roughly to where uh, the plants are are just below the a few inches below the water level, and then gives them more height to grow up. So I don't have to put the lights up super super high because we're going to be shining down on those plants or in the bog. So I'm going to bring a basket over and test it out, and if it's not enough, I'll put a little more gravel in, but it's roughly about what you see here. And just to give you an idea, we are, we're up to here on the aggregate. So you can see, you know, there's a couple feet. You know, there's between 18 and 24 inches of aggregate in there, so uh, it's pretty substantial. So these are actually the plants I've been growing out for the wetlands filter. I just have them attached to the uh, discus aquarium right now to give them uh, nutrients and everything. And of course a little supplemental light I put on there. And as I was looking at them, so those are the baskets I was talking about. And uh, for part of the build you're going to see across the back, I've, I've made it such that I can suspend those baskets across the back of the aquarium so we can have wetlands plants growing out the back and the side. And I was looking at the... These plants have grown so much since I got them. You know, they were tiny. You know, now they're like that. And I was thinking, you know what? I can actually plant these in the wetlands filter further down, and they'll still be good um, in terms of having enough of the plant out of the water to be happy. And that will mean I don't have to spend the light so high, so I don't have as much light bleed. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to obviously keep the ones that are in the baskets that are going across the back there. You'll see when I put them in there, it'll make sense. But these other guys, I think they're going to go straight into the, uh, the uh, aggregate substrate of the uh, wetlands filter. So the tank may be looking uh, a little different than last time we saw it. Uh, as you can see, I've been progressing, but uh, I haven't exactly filmed every little step of the way. It has just been hectic lately. But let's start off with where we last left off, which is the wetlands filter. So the wetlands filter has been running for a while, for a few weeks, and it... Uh, is amazing. It clears up the water super fast. I stir it all up and I'm and I just amazed by how fast it, it, uh, <laughs> it clears out the water column. I've uh, been adding a little bit of uh, bacteria to it, getting it seeded, and uh, been adding a little bit of water from other tanks. And of course, you can see I've added a lot of plants and I've started adding lighting. So we're going to, you know, bacteria is going to come over with these plants, which is good, adding it, which is good. And um, so the lights. So you can see there's two types of plants. There's the ones that are planted in the wetlands filter, and there's the other ones that I have connected to the wood uh, with the roots coming down in this aquarium. So 
Uh, a little hint for some of the fish that are going in here. I can't keep a lot of aquatic plants in here. There is one type of aquatic plant I am going to plan on keeping in here, um, but the other ones would probably get eaten. So we're going to do these immerse grown plus I would really love to have a canopy of these big jungle leaves, you know, coming up over. Now, there, some of them are sitting down right now because they were moved over not long ago, uh, so they have to perk back up and grow towards the light. And uh, speaking of the light, you can see I've added uh, a, a piece of, uh, well, basically like a, a wooden, uh, black painted wooden uh, framework for me to hang lights, you know, so I can target uh, the wetlands filter. Uh, and uh, the back of the aquarium where I have the uh, bracing on the top which allows me to either extend the wetlands filter out with uh, those, bo those baskets and I can fill those with gravel and put plants in them or I can just sort of strap the plants on to the framework and to the wood like I have. Um, and so I have, you know, I can extend lights out over, over that area and I have these guys here. Right now I'm using the stands for those castles, but I actually do want to make them go higher up. So I'm planning on adding a couple hooks to the ceiling and extending those lights as close to the ceiling as I can to give as much room as possible for these, uh, you know, beautiful plants to grow up and just give me a truly exotic uh, uh, South American uh, canopy. <laughs> and uh, that's another kind of another giveaway to the the. The stock that's going in here uh, it is going to be a combination of South and Central American. It's it's a group of fish that I just really love, and uh, I think they'll all work well together. So that's that's what I'm working on. So we're letting the tank settle in right now. Um, the fish are on their way, and um, I'm going to add a, a few more. I'm going to add some plants that I think can hold up to these guys down here in the tank. I'm going to let the water get a little more clear, and I'm going to work. Uh, on adjusting those lights up there and probably adding some additional light to the back of the aquarium. You can see here uh, I've started to amass materials for the aquarium and this is just a tiny portion of it. There is going to be an insane amount of aquascaping going into this tank. So, so beyond the wetland filter and the riverbank up there we have a lot of aquascaping going on underneath here. So let's talk about that real quick. We're going to start from the left side where the waterfalls are and this area is going to be sort of the upper part of the river. It's going to have more rock. Some of the rock is going to be built up pretty high and uh, it's going to have higher flow. And it's going to transition down into the middle part of the river here where we're going to be adding more sand, less of the vertical buildup from the rock and everything, sort of slowing things down a little bit. Now, not necessarily slowing down water flow because one of the lessons learned for the 3,000 gallon is that with giant, big, messy eaters, uh, like you know, uh, giant Oscars and peacock bass and everything, is they create a ton of little particles of food that go down there. And if you don't have an army of ground crew to clean that up, you need to keep it moving. So we're gonna do both. We have, so we're gonna have a lot more uh, fish that are gonna eat that scrap that runs up, that lands on the bottom. And we're gonna keep that water flowing all throughout the aquarium with strategically positioned water jets all throughout the aquarium. So as you can see here, there's a stack of power heads and these guys are going to be integrated all inside the aquarium. Some of them are going to be down low, some are going to be up high, going different directions. We're going to keep good flow moving throughout this inquire aquarium, coming down here to where our return pumps are, where our pumps are going to be, and they're going to be taking all that material and then piping it back to the very bottom of the wetland filter, 30 feet, 33 feet down that way. Uh, but then getting back to the aquascape, now we get down into the large section, the 16 foot section, the lower part of the river where our biggest, meanest fish are gonna be, the, you know, the, the Fogo peacock bass and the arowana and the big Oscar. And down here, we're gonna actually build a river dock. So picture like a, uh, like a, a small um, village on the river with like a wooden dock coming out into the water. Now this should be sticking out a little bit. You know, the fish could be swimming under and everything. It'll look like something from a, a small village on the Amazon River, or in this case, the Zingu River. And, and I think that's gonna be really cool for the fish and they're gonna love it. And you also gotta remember there's gonna be all kinds of wood root work coming down the back and plants growing up and out. So it is gonna be something. And then in this portion of the river, that aquascape is gonna be lower than 
the higher part up there. So the whole thing's gonna be transitioning down like this, and we're gonna have a lot more sand area down here because we're gonna have a lot larger fish who need more room. And I can tell you from having these guys in a 3,000 gallon, and you think that's a lot of room, but uh, you start getting uh, peacock bass pushing four feet, arowana pushing four feet, uh, you name it, uh, big catfish, they eat up space like no tomorrow. So we're gonna accommodate them in this aquarium. We're gonna use all the things we learned from the 3,000 gallon. We're gonna handle that sediment better. Uh, we're gonna have better flow and uh, we're gonna have zones within the aquarium. Speaking of those zones, so one thing I need to do is I'm going to create channels here on each post and then a reciprocal channel over here so that I can put dividers and pull them in and out. And the same thing with the, the bracing. Normally I would have a big thick brace that would go across here, but this time I'm gonna have two braces, one here, one here with a gap in the middle that goes across so that I can pull those dividers in and out. And that's gonna allow us to have a, a river aquarium that maybe has one, two, three, four sections, or one big section, middle section, top section, or maybe after time, maybe there's no more need for the, the estuary, the grow out, maybe all the fish are large enough, maybe just two sections, an upper and a lower, you know? So, but we'll have that flexibility with those grates. So every single one of these will be capable of having a divider that goes in where obviously the water flows through the divider, but it keeps the fish either on one side or the other. Because uh, one thing I learned with the 3000 gallon is you can have fish that live together for three, four years and then they reach that max size and then they, de they determine they can't get along anymore. So like, for example, for example, in the 3000 gallon, uh, you know, the, the Fogo, they live on the right and the Orinoco peacock bass live on the left. They don't get along and uh, certain fish can go back and forth from side to side and other ones can't. Uh, so, you know, it's just the way it is. But those fish all grew up together and they've been living together for since 2019. So. And that, and that just happened in this last year. But now you've got Fogos pushing 40 inches, you got the Orinoco's full size. So uh, yeah, things change and uh, I wanna build a tank for the long haul for these guys that accommodates you know, all the lessons learned from keeping them in the 3,000 gallon for the last say five years. So the next time you see the 4,500 gallon, the filter box will be completely mudded, sanded, and fiberglassed. The same thing with the main tank area, we'll be adding the channels in. All the channels will be in place. So the, you know, the channels that are for the dividers, they'll be in place uh, for each one of these posts on the inside and on the back. And uh, the entire tank will be fiberglass, sanded, and, and hopefully if I can swing it, I may even get that first coat of Pond Armor in there. So yeah, it's coming along and it's coming along fast. Okay, so what do I mean when I say integrated riverbank system? So once we have the top bracing going all the way across the aquarium, we're going to be building some suspended area that hangs down from that bracing into the water, which is gonna be full of uh, plant baskets, they're gonna be full of uh, tropical plants that are gonna be growing from inside the water up and out and above the aquarium. So it's basically gonna be uh, lighting diffuser that's painted black and then it's zip tied together so it creates like a, a U that hangs down in the back there but it'll be pretty much invisible from inside the aquarium because it's going to be you know up here what you're going to see is like the roots and everything coming down but on the both on the back of it and on the front of it there's going to be wood root coming down so you're going to have so you're just going to see wood root coming down and then roots from the plants coming down into the water for a very natural look. And that is going to go more or less the entire length of the aquarium. That's going to be a huge nutrient export as well as it's going to create a ton of awesome territory for the fish vertically. So we're going to have a lot of rock and wood and scape coming up and then we're going to have wood root coming down and also uh, roots dangling down from the plants. And it's going to give us areas to tie across to add other uh, plants like uh, vine plants like pothos and things like that where they can have things to grow all over and have the roots coming down into the water in certain areas which should be pretty awesome. So by the time it's done you've got a, a village river dock coming out creating territory. You've got all kinds of caves and scape and everything going all on the bottom and then you've got this riverbank system that's going to have 
shorter routes coming down from the, the top part of the river to very, very long routes that come all the way down into the sand on the uh, far right side of the river, the, the lower portion of the Zingu River there. And it's gonna create quite a awesome looking aquascape and it's gonna create some awesome territory for the fish. So I recommend you check back soon and subscribe to the channel because we have an absolute ton of things going on in the Aquarium Main fish basement this summer. Uh, we have the 4,500 gallon going on in the annex, the Zingu River Aquarium, a uh, giant wetland filter build, integrated live riverbank system, an uh, Amazonian village dock going out in there. We're going to be transferring the fish, the big boys, the 40 inch peacock bass from the 3,000 gallon into the 4,500. The sharks are going into the 3,000 gallon Predator Bay 3000. That's got a ring to it. And that's going to be awesome. And then, of course, the chain reaction, right? Then the 1800 gallon becomes the new home to the reef slope, which I don't know, I'm thinking some sort of lagoon aquarium. It's got a great footprint for that. We're going to be taking everything from the 265 and everything from the 600 reef slope, and it's going in the new lagoon aquarium. That is going to be awesome. That, of course, opens up the 1500 gallon system. Uh, the 600 reef slow, the 700 gallon refugium sump, and the 265, that's going freshwater. So we have some really cool stuff coming from that, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to all this, <laughs> to be honest with you. And then, uh, if that's not enough, we still have a couple 1500 gallon tanks to build. And the Zen Aquarium, the 12 foot long 600 gallon nano aquarium. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.